Hi, this is Jay Ellison with Echo Benefit Solutions. And I just uh, talked to a friend of mine who is comparing insurance between employer coverage and, uh, and, uh, and other coverage they have available. And I looked at the information for their employer coverage and it turns out that there is, it's a, it's a combination, but the hospitalization part of the plan is what they call an indemnity plan. And what that means, um, you'll see language like indemnity or fixed benefit plan. And they usually cost less than regular insurance, which, is, which makes them attractive until you know how they work. So the way um, this kind of plan works, uh, regular insurance has a, uh, a deductible and then once you meet the deductible, you pay nothing else after that. Fixed benefit or indemnity plans pay a set fixed benefit for each day in the hospital, each kind of surgery. And it's a set amount, regardless of where you live, regardless of complications, regardless of how many doctors are involved, it pays a set price per day in the hospital or ICU or per procedure. So anything left on that bill after the fixed benefit is paid to you is on you. So you think of the deductible for regular insurance on the front end, and then the plan picks up everything else after that. Fixed benefit, you get a check and you have to, you're responsible for everything else after that without a limit. There's no cap on that. So if your fixed benefit pays out, you know, fourteen thousand dollars you know, which sounds like a lot of money for a $90,000 hospital stay, do the math, you're hosed. So these plans are very attractive uh, on the surface because the premiums are lower. A lot of them do underwriting, which means they don't take pre-existing conditions. And some of them have a habit of denying claims because they'll go back, dig through medical records and say that, oh, well, you got a test for this 10 years ago, so it's pre-existing and they won't pay. Um, so a lot of small employers who are trying so hard to do the right thing by their, by their team and get them insurance, will will get this kind of plan. And then inevitably one of their team members is going to get burned by this kind of scenario. And now that reflects poorly on the owner, you know, the managers who are trying to help them out by getting them insurance. And then it turns out their insurance is, is not picking up the tab for, uh, for a surgery or an emergency or something like that. It defeats the purpose of, uh, of providing benefits for your for your team. Um, I've seen it. I've talked to several employers in the last couple of years that have been burned by this kind of plan, and had a team member that it just wasn't appropriate for. Like it was okay for everybody else, but the one team member that was a little older, a little less healthy, just got beat up. You know, to the tune of you know five figures in uh, hospital bills. So it's terrible. Um, so terms to look for. If, you're, uh, if you get a quote for insurance that, or somebody is telling you about insurance, that uh, the price is uh, surprisingly low, okay? It's too good to be true. It probably is, isn't true, you know? But uh, terms to look for. Um, on the literature, whatever there, it says in big print, you know, with a big number, benefit amount, you know, it pays, you know, $1,200 per day in the hospital. That's a red flag. So it sounds like a lot of money. But if you've ever looked at a hospital bill, that does not go as far as you think, okay? So if it says benefit amount instead of deductible or max out of pocket and things like that, like deductible, copay, max out of pocket, coinsurance, those are terms for regular insurance, Affordable Care Act, stuff like that. Benefit amount, per day rate, per procedure rate, that's the language of fixed benefits. And that's something that most people want to avoid. Not everybody. Most people, lots of really, you know, long-standing reputable companies have these plans in their, in their toolbox. And for a certain section of people that a responsible agent will screen and make sure they're appropriate for, for them, you're probably okay. You pair that with an accident plan, you're probably okay. Um, if you're over 30 and you're thinking about maybe having a kid or, um, you know, you get a small sports injuries or something like that, you might need to get fixed later. This is not for you. It's just not. So if you have this kind of plan, you've heard this kind of language, please give me a call, email me, text me, ask me, you know, questions. I can clarify things for you. Um, these plans are usually sold over the phone from a call center. 
So they get you on a lead list. If you do a search for insurance um, and then they'll call you. And once you've been looking at regular prices for insurance and they call you with something that's half the price or, you know, or close to that, you know, a lot of people jump on this and insurance language is complicated. So not implying anybody's shady, but if they don't explain the plan language to you very well, and they just go over the features and benefits that they don't give you the flip side of the coin of the liabilities to it. Eventually the big bear trap of that no limit is going to bite you right on the ass cheek. And you can't get insurance retroactively to cover that from somebody else. It doesn't work that way. So um, ask lots of questions, call me. It's what I do. So Jay Ellison um, at Echo Benefit Solutions on Facebook and EchoBenefitSolutions.com. Spell it just like that. And uh, I'm here to help. Thanks. Have a great day.